Hey, thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Lafayette. We're in Acts chapter 18. <coughs> Read through the first four verses yesterday, and uh, I looked at this, and, and I think I, uh, well, let's just read verse 5. Well, let's read verse 4 and go into verse 5, and let me tell you what I, I, I've just looked at and thought about this morning. It talks about Paul. Paul's gone to Athens, or left Athens. He's at Corinth. He runs into someone. And this is what it says Paul is doing. Paul, verse 4, and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks. Then it said, verse 5, when Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. When I look at those two verses, I mean, in my Bible, there's a paragraph break. But when I look at those two verses together, I begin to see that it's possible that Paul is spending all this time, uh, perhaps, and I do not know. This is an assumption on my part, and I've done no research, no study. But it appears that Paul is reasoning with them and talking to them about uh, how the Christ must come and what must happen and what things might have to take place. And, and uh, he would come as, a, as a, a, a warrior first. He would come first as a servant and how the, the Christ must die. And he's saying things. This is, this is what I'm perceiving in this scripture. And, he, and they're being persuaded. And perhaps that might be why I tripped up on the word persuaded yesterday. Um, He's persuading them to see Scripture from a different viewpoint. Then when Silas, in verse 5, when Silas and Timothy come, he's compelled by the Spirit. It's as though now is the time. And he testifies to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. So, with that understanding... He tells the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. So he wasn't persuading them to become Christians in verse 4. He's persuading them to look at Scripture from a different viewpoint. And then he presents to them in verse 5, Jesus the Messiah. <coughs> the reaction, verse 6. But when they opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And he departed from there and entered into the house of a certain na man named Justice, one who worshiped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Then Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his household. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. <coughs> this just goes to show you. And, uh, I've never said I've known it all, but this just goes to show you that you're always learning something. And perhaps for most people, they always put four and five together and thought nothing about it. But for me, if, uh, I've heard it even preached, talked about being persuaded and, and, and them using the word persuade <coughs> to mean that they were born again Christians and so forth. Uh, but it's interesting, just today, the Lord's speaking. I'm still learning. We're all still learning. But just today, it, it appears that the reasoning is helping them see Scripture in a different spot. And then he says, Jesus is the Messiah. The Lord is still speaking to all of us. Learn something today. They, and when, they, when he said that, they opposed him they, and, and blasphemed Uh and I'm sure they blaspheme by taking the name of Jesus, the Christ, and uh, blaspheming that name. And so he shook his garments and said, forget it. His bl uh, your blood is upon your own heads. I have come to you and persuaded you, shown you how it should be. You've, uh, you've, you've begun to agree and be persuaded. But as soon as I mention Jesus' name, you say it's impossible. From now on, I'm going to the Gentiles. So he goes to a, a man named Justice. It says he's a worshiper of God right next door to the synagogue. And then Crispus, 
The ruler of the synagogue believed in the Lord. Notice in verse 4, it never said anyone believed in the Lord. But here, Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, because Paul had spent this time uh, persuading him, showing him scripture that said to him, wait a second, that's true. And then when Paul presented Jesus, <coughs> Crispus believed on the Lord with all of his household. And then it said, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. As soon as Crispus was like the kingpin, and as soon as he began to believe, Others, his family began to believe, and, and somehow it, it appears from Scripture that others were affected. Uh, many of the Corinthians, and it doesn't say the Jews necessarily, but it says many Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. My friend, you don't know. We, we, we don't know uh, what's going to happen when we let people know that we believe Jesus. You might have some of the best friends and so forth, and maybe you're taking your time, and maybe, maybe you shouldn't, I don't know. But maybe you've been developing a relationship, and, you know, that's fine. Some say that's fine, some say that's not. But the minute you mention Jesus, you become a lunatic, and that's exactly what happened to Paul here. But you don't know if, if that one person, if that one person that you're talking to might be that, 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 that key person that will open the door for many to believe. You don't know that you might be preaching or, or witnessing to the next Billy Graham or witnessing, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to the next big church leader. You don't know that. Be faithful and witness. And know that when you bring up Jesus, people are going to hate it. But do it anyway and honor God. Father, help us to be faithful witnesses. We bless you. And Lord, I personally thank you for opening my eyes to Scripture every day. And I thank you, Lord, that you open uh, their eyes as well. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.